Here it comes. Was it for not? Uh, for not. You can't Tom, let that victory go unnoticed. Olympic champion Tom Brands, coached by an Olympic champion Dan Gable. What did that Olympic gold mean to Dan? As much as you would know, um, obviously a lot. And what did that Olympic gold mean to you? I think that um, speaking for Coach Gable, I think that he likes to see duplication. I think any coach loves it when an athlete um, attains the uh, highest honor. Um, that sounds kind of corny maybe, but even more than that, it's um, about the satisfaction that um, when you see people that you're coaching, when you see them attain something like that, and it, it fulfills you. I mean, you did your job as a coach, obviously, but now you have a guy who, um, you know, meaning me, feels pretty good about himself. And there's a lot of satisfaction in that. So, and he can be a part of that. Um, you know, him winning the gold medal, um, you know, for me was what I looked up to and what you, what you try to duplicate. So he may, as a coach, be trying to get his guys to duplicate, but his guys who are tuned into him and basically hinge on every word that he talks every day, um, we try to duplicate, you know, that that metal hung above his fireplace every time we walked into his house for a meal or just because we were there, you saw it. Right. And, you know, that's Tangible. imprinted. It's imprinted. It's real. Yeah. I mean, it's imprinted in your brain, and that's what you're after. I got a great story. 96 Olympics. Uh, he's wrestling. Semifinals, I find Gable out in the hallway against the wall. He slid to his butt, and he really thinks he's having a heart attack. But he's hyperventilating from your match. I'm thinking mouth to mouth, looking at Gable. <laughs> said, I don't want to do this. And after looking at him again, yeah, no. that was, you know. And, but here's, here's the real kicker. In the finals, in the finals, and I got a point, Gable throws his entire shoulder out during his match. <laughs> Just, and Gable's one of those great coaches, like Myron Roderick, who I saw do it, who could transcend, really come out of that corner spiritually somehow and encourage you, give you energy that you didn't even know he was doing. And you could feel, I don't know, my question to you is, did you feel, <laughs> did you feel that coming to you or did you just assume it was there? You know, I don't, I don't, I'll tell you what, there was a lot of fear with him too. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to come back to the corner when you didn't get your hand raised. Yeah. So, and I'm saying that half jokingly, but um, you wanted to please, there's no doubt you wanted to please the, the, um, the man. I mean, he's he the man. He made you better. Absolutely. And not because of being in the same room, but because of the dialogue, the communication, the, the time spent, the time spent with other people, bringing other people up that maybe um, that you were competing against on a daily basis in that room. So he would raise somebody else's level, it would impact somebody else, and it, it just kept going. Um, when people ask me about Gable, um, the best way I can describe it is that we got better and we didn't know we were getting better. And so all of a sudden, 360 days later, you're pretty damn good because you got better every day, but you didn't know it was incrementally, right. but you didn't really know it, but all of a sudden you can go out there and whip somebody now. Yeah. Brick, fried brick. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Let's, uh, let, let, let's conclude. Let's, let's go with, with John on the final, final question here. Let's think about this decision. We got a week away. It goes our way. Give me 60 seconds, John, on what you want the wrestling community to understand from that point forward. What is it that you, what's the message you want us to walk forward with? Number one, that you were all part of one of the greatest wins at one of the most important times in the history of our sport. This was not and would not have been achieved by one or two people. This was achieved by the will of the wrestling community, and particularly the American wrestling community, who I think when the final story is told, will have played an enormous role in achieving this success. And we'll, we'll talk about that later because it's a very, very important story for the history of our sport to be told. Um, number two, that much like the demands that we put on each other as athletes in this sport, that we got to keep getting better. Um, that in this victory, we are not going to be complacent, but in this victory, should it come our way, uh, we are going to change the sport for the better. And uh, three, that we're never going to lose the important lessons of the past that make us the people that we are in the sport because 
it not only creates a transcendent relationship amongst great athletes and wrestlers based on the bond that we have together, it creates a transcendent relationship with society.